Good evening, Wrightsville. Donna Pinckney here with your Thursday evening devotion. Tonight we continue our series on giving and generosity, and so I've brought another friend with me. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet my friend Tom Barber, who's going to talk about why he gives. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Tom Barber, and I've been asked to talk a little bit about why I give and you know, as I prepared to comment on this, thinking about my thoughts about stewardship, uh, an old joke surfaced that I found. You see, there were a couple of friends, and let's call them Larry and Jerry, and they decided to go fishing one day about uh, 30 miles off of Riceville Beach. And unfortunately, while they were out there, their boat hit something in the water, and there was a giant hole, and the boat sank very quickly, and they only had time for each of them to grab a life ring and there they were in the water, the boat was gone, three to four foot swells. And as time slowly went by, you know, the afternoon started to stretch on and Larry was really scared. I mean, he was out there afraid for his life. He was concerned about floating, you know, all night long in the ocean. He was worried about sharks. And Larry was afraid he was gonna die out there in the open water. And meanwhile, Jerry spent the afternoon laid back on his uh, ring, catching a few rays and whistling and, as the, you know, the swells just kind of rolled back and forth over him. And finally, Larry called out and said, Jerry, aren't you scared? Aren't you afraid of dying out here? I mean, how can you be so relaxed and whistling while we're in so much jeopardy? And Jerry said, well, you see, Larry, I earn over $100,000 a month, and I go to church every Sunday, and I tithe a lot, so I know my pastor's going to find me. Yeah, well, you know, what, when I used to think about that, uh, I, I used to uh, I used to think about church and about pastors and how they address the subject of tithing, and I always thought it was something like, you know, fundraising or bringing in money for church projects. And But over time, I've learned to understand about something about stewardship, and I believe that church leadership is crucial in helping all of us understand that stewardship is not about fundraising, it's about discipleship. Giving is not a burden. Giving is recognition that we are charged with managing appropriately what God has given to us. And God demonstrates, your giving demonstrates the maturity of our relationship with God and his son Jesus. Corinthians 9 verses 10 through 15 address that. It might be worth reading. I have learned and believe me, continue to learn about tithing and its connection to our relationship with our Creator. Growing in faith has caused me to realize how important it is to honor God for what He's provided. The Bible instructs us to honor God by using our talents and the treasures we have to benefit those in need. The Bible instructs us to be good disciples by working to bring others to Christ. You can read about the Great Commission uh, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. I've learned that my treasure and talents are provided by God and that my role as a manager, or shall we say steward, is to distribute those gifts for the benefit of God's kingdom. Tithing strengthens the relationship with God. You may never know exactly how your stewardship has brought others to Christ, but here are a few examples. Tithing at church results in many things. It provides the salaries for our staff. It provides the ability to educate our children. It provides a place to worship God and his son. It provides classes to help us to grow as Christians. And it provides the needs or needs for many in our community and abroad. One example of providing our community that's really been tremendous and, and our congregation has had a tremendous impact on it is the Help Hub. The Help Hub was created about five years ago uh, and through tithing and Wrightsville United Methodist Church and 15 other churches support this a community asset. And over the last five years, $850,000 has been given to people in need and over 9,000 visits have taken place to the Help Hub. I believe that, you know, God smiles when, when we share our treasures that he's given us. And just think of the smiles in this case of the Help Hub. I suggest you read Hebrews chapter 13, 16 to learn a little bit more about that. The bottom line to all of this is that we're caretakers of what God has provided us. Think if you were to do a Google search looking for your home from space 
as you zoom in on your home, you're going to see, you know, the galaxies and then the Earth. Then you're going to see the continents. Then you're going to see the United States. And finally, you'll see North Carolina and then Wilmington and then your street and finally your house. That speck of real estate where you live belongs to God just as everything he creates. The Bible teaches us to be good disciples and to use what the Lord has provided to bring others to Christ and to assist those that are less fortunate than we are. Faith in our Lord will drive us toward exceptional, being exceptional stewards with our gift. The perfect picture of all this was painted in a sermon uh, presented by Christina Turner uh, a few years ago or a few months ago. Anyway, she was talking about the starving widow of Zarephath. And you can find this story in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 to 14. They had the wife or the, the widow and her son had just enough flour and oil for one more meal before they were going to starve to death because a drought was all over the land. And suddenly out of the desert emerges Elijah and he was sent by God. And Elijah asked the woman, he says to the widow, could you bring me some water? And though she was really distraught, she was courteous enough to go and begin to fetch him the water. While she was going to do that, Elijah said, oh, and by the way, I'd like to have some bread to eat, and I'd like you to feed me before you and your son. Now, you can imagine what this woman was thinking. And I mean, Christina did a wonderful job for those of you that saw that sermon. She set the scene up. Like, What's wrong with this guy? He's dirty. He stinks. He probably has a pencil stuffed somewhere in that scraggly beard, and he wants the last bit of food we have. My son and I are about to eat our last meal, and then that's all we have, and then we're going to die. But she thought, and she said, you know, he did say he was man of God and that God would provide a miracle if I do as he says. And the widow chose to have faith in Elijah and God and fed him. And the next morning, according to the Bible, and for the time thereafter, by that miracle, her jar of flour and her jug of oil were full, and she and her son had what they needed. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 speaks to God's promise to, buy, to provide more than what you need in life. So let us celebrate by sharing him and his blessings with others. By doing so, we grow in faith and we bring others to Christ. May God come closer to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen.